I'm in the beautiful garden of Gilda Mitchell um, on the shores of Lake Wiley in Rock Hill, South Hi, Carolina. Girl. That's and right. <laughs> um, this really is a garden. Um, when we came up, I was so thrilled. I said, there's no turf grass. This is all greenery and texture. Um, tell me how it evolved to become like this. I just love having zero grass to mow. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I didn't have children that needed a lawn to run on. I have a beach they can run on. And my husband loved that. That was just, he was all about that. So that's where that came from. And I saw the levels of the property starting from the beach on up the hill. Oh, it was like, okay, this is just screaming for wonderful, fun things. And of course, Paul Thompson um, taught you the Master Gardener course when you came here. He's I'm a the... groupie. <laughs> We're his disciples. Well, yes, he he's did a, a pretty job. special one. Oh, ain't he though? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I thank you even um, your boxer, which is one of many that you mm. had. What is the, what is that puppy's his name? His name is Master Gardener Mitchell. We call him Gardener, and, and he's. He likes to help that? water the garden. He <laughs> helps everybody. That's right, a big slobberer. Yes, my dogs are always, and I feel so secure with them. I'm out here with my dogs. And I moved here with my ferns that I'd harvested out of the wild in Southeast Texas. And so then I started every winter dividing the ferns. And what a perfect habitat for ferns, because really <laughs> this is, Mostly a shade garden. Oh, and they're so happy here. And I irrigate the whole five acres out of the lake. So they naturally loved all that. And as I started developing the garden and trying to bring other plants in, that this is basically right now the garden that deer designed because they ate every hydrangea, every akuba. It was it was horrible. So as those things were taken away from me. I, I look and I've got these ferns. I've always got my reliable ferns. And and even, you know, with the hurricane that just came through, they are still, they're so up and fat and happy. And they're no work. People look at my garden and they think, God, how can you keep all this up? Because the fern beds are no work. Once they establish, you know, it takes a few years. Once they get thick, no weeds come up. In the winter, when they turn brown, we weed eat them. They mulch themselves. We start all over in the spring. And all that time, I've been able to tend another part of the garden that is not as needy. It's not a needy plant. Well, the texture is just so much fun. Um, mm. You know, elephant ears, bananas. Um, <laughs> how did the bananas come to be here? Oh, my and, God. and that beautiful little cathedral that we walked through oh, with the it's, bananas. I think growing up in Louisiana, you had to have a banana tree. I mean, I've always saw banana trees. And when I first moved here, uh, I brought bananas and they, they can't live here and I can't keep taking them in and out. So a lot of it was the textures and the colors, the umbrella palms is, it was in the ditches in Louisiana. And so it was just a no brainer, you know, I just started putting out because the, fern, the deer weren't eating them too. So I just started putting out things that I loved. So once I found the mooshoes, and how can you look at an elephant ear and not smile? It's just, they make you so happy. And next thing you know, I've got almost a five acres of the things. I love. <laughs> and we're not finished yet. No, we certainly no, are not. No, baby, we have <laughs> lots of gardening still to do. And rice paper plant. Oh, the rice paper plants were. Another incredible texture because mm -hmm. we have such mm -hmm. upright bananas and then the rice paper plants with those I mean, wonderful you, horizontal. You think I yeah. planned it, but I hate to admit how much of it was just accidentally worked out that way. And the rice paper plant is wonderful for this area and for the way I water and irrigate and they get so big, they make me sneeze a lot, but they're worth it. <laughs> and I got them by knocking on a lady's door and saying, I have some I, pottery I made. Can I have some of your rice paper plant? And you take my pottery? And she was real excited to do that. And that's where it, that's where it started. And I've done that lots of times is barter, you know, Oh, pottery. It's so or. much fun mm -hmm. to pass along mm -hmm. plants. Oh, and, and, that's and, and then it gives you a story with the plant. Uh, Besides yeah. the beauty and the texture hey, of the plant, you have a story. I don't want a technical name. I want the backstory. And I'm like that with the Olympics. 
I don't care who wins or loses. I just want everybody's <laughs> backstory. So with my plants, it's, and it, I think from being a social worker for years, I'm used to I gather information and what's important to me is the, the really cool the little pearls about getting to know things. So, you know, as I walk my garden, I'm with my daddy, I'm with Marie Helene, I'm with all these people in my life that, uh, you know, it brings them to mind. Part of the specialness of the property for me is the up the hill where I developed Fiacra, is the patron saint of gardening that looks like Paul Thompson despite what he says, that I developed the area with the intent of a special contained area to have a home for the family ashes. Yes. And so there's four adults and nine dogs or ashes or in this area and uh, the ajuga and things started really growing good up there. Yeah. It was great. So it's a special, it's a meditative yes. spot. And it makes me happy to have fiacra, especially with my gardening interests up there. And my husband would love that. But, you know, and it's part of being remembered. And, and a table, I think, that your that father-in-law My father-in-law. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, I was trying to keep it all together there. He was definitely a crafter, despite the marble eyes and the alligators. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that, that little area that the moss just took over in, and I know he's there. And yeah, that was, you know, my husband loved that his dad had made these planters and the table and stuff. So as much as I can, I like to uh, keep that kind of thing together. It's the family tradition. And you do have a moss garden in a shady place near the beach. Yeah. And it's perfectly lovely, but there are spots of mosses everywhere. Oh yeah. It's how much fun is it to take your shoes off and put your feet in the moss? <laughs> that feels so good on a hot summer day. And I think you mm -hmm. found a place where the fairies were. Oh, yeah. Tell me about what just happened when you Dude. lost a tree. Oh, I had a huge tree that came down during the hurricane, and uh, the roots of it totally lifted the path. And I could see underneath it, that's where the fairies had been hiding all those years. <laughs> I'd been trying to find them. They were up next to the moss garden is the driftwood garden and I didn't think they had moved that far up but it was such an it's a, such a nice place and it's so special now to walk over that hump that the storm made and it, I am not high maintenance it does not take much to make me happy <laughs> and the driftwood oh the um, driftwood is fun isn't it it's beautiful I love it each one's a piece of art it is and it's so much fun to, how many boat rides can you go on? So I like to go out and have people help me scout out for driftwood. We drag it home. And then the next time they visit, they're always really curious about where I put the piece they have. They relate to it. They, and, you know, I didn't, when I saw them, I didn't even think of them as being placed. They just seem to be such a natural part of the whole garden, the ambiance that they bring. I just try, girl. Every, <laughs> <laughs> Successful. Doesn't always work out. <laughs> Successful. <laughs> but I've had 30 years to move stuff around. And you love pottery and have your husband's boathouse. You never got to put the boat in. I think you appropriated it, did you? <laughs> I did. He'd be so glad you said that. He felt so slighted. <laughs> no, when we bought this house, I saw the boathouse and knew it was, I knew where I wanted to go with pottery. And this was the perfect space. That, so he, the boat got never got moved in. The interior of your beautiful home is filled with art that mm. both you and mm. fellow craftsmen have made. <laughs> it's so much fun to see it outside. Tell me about mm. when the man tried, came to try to read the electric music. Oh, that's great. One of the first pieces that I did that I incorporated magnets into hanging, how, how do you hang this pottery, was looking at what's attractive about an electrical meter? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I was thinking, what, this thing is right here by the door, what do I do with it? So I made the ball of it, the face of a sunflower, and put magnets on the back of the ceramic part, and it just clicks right over the little ball. And then that started, I opened up a whole new world of, this is how I can hang my pottery. I can do artistic things on a flat surface and then get it to work and hang on the side of the boathouse and stuff. You do have a few flowering plants, but some of them are uh, not actually plants. These I beautiful love it. Calla. My calla lilies. <laughs> I'm so proud of them. These have been there 15 years and I've had some broken limbs. I know are going to hit them and stuff, but 
I was really frustrated trying to grow calla lilies. It didn't work in my shady environment and stuff, so I showed them I made my own. But yeah, I'm really proud of that. And I think any of my pottery that I do, because I make the asparagus and the green beans and the carrots, I, I, I've been on a seed thing, making my big interpretation of interesting seeds that I've seen. That's what I did last winter. I saw some peas in a pot I in the house. I made <laughs> English peas. I'm English peas. I went through, and a lot of it is, um, especially if I'm hand building a project, you've got leftover clay and you don't want to just waste it. So what can I do with it? So I make peas and whatever strange little thing comes my way. You do have a small sunny area mm -hmm. and so you do have a place for pollinators but it's always kind of a what Jeez. will it lots of salvia because again the deer are hungry <sighs> and do come in the yard big time the pollinators did great out there this year though it's like i said it's very limited sun so i've had a lot of sad losses but the different variety of salvia i'm trying to collect there's really and you know you only have a one-shot deal you know, so it takes several years take to get this developed. Yeah. So it's four years old, and I'm beginning to see some of the old, overgrown English garden effect that I want down there. But it makes me so happy to sit in my rocking chair and look over there and watch well, the watch the hummingbirds come by because they love this. They're loving this area too. Um, the beautiful trees covered with lichens because they're mm -hmm. so close to the water. Mm -hmm. The refuge for wildlife. <laughs> um, the textures, the mm. um, a few camellias and things for the winter, but the mm. winter is when you can do your pottery That's and it. then and then find ways to make that artistic part mm. of you relate to the artistic part oh, outside. It it's just been a wonderful Girl. journey for us to come. Thank you so oh, so very don't much. Don't go, <laughs> don't go. Let's stay. We'll come back. <laughs> Too much fun.